into the oven, 350 degrees for an hour. All right, so here's what we got here, pumpkin pie. Hey everyone, Dave here, and today we're gonna make cottage cheese keto pumpkin pie, and it's gonna be awesome. To start it off, we're gonna need this thing called the bowl. Very useful little tool when cooking. I thought it'd be good to make a pumpkin pie kind of replacement copycat pumpkin pie because Thanksgiving is almost here. One cup of almond flour, one, one and a half cups of almond flour is what we need. One and a half. Now, yeah, so I was thinking, all right, people are gonna want, you know what I should make? This is an idea, epiphany moment, stuffing. I wonder if we could pull off a keto stuffing. That'd be an interesting future video. Anyways, cup and a half of almond flour, quarter cup of coconut flour, is that right? Yeah, quarter cup of coconut flour. Then a quarter cup of sweetener. We got options. You could use allulose or erythritol. I've got some, whoops, sorry. I've got some swerve. I wonder if I have enough for this whole recipe. I think I might. Quarter cup of swerve or whatever sweetener that is keto friendly into your crust. Now a quarter teaspoon of salt, which I have here. Now I wanna hear about your, if you guys are willing to tell me, your Thanksgiving traditions. In the comments, let me know what you guys like to do for Thanksgiving. Quarter cup of fine sea salt. Generally, we like to spend time with family. Pretty common, I think. And then a half teaspoon of cinnamon, 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 cinnamon. In a minute, cinnamon, cinnamon, minute. Was that Lizzo? <laughs> half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I go to my mom's house usually, or my brother's. Last year I went to my brother's. This year I'm going to my mom's. You know, but turkey's always a staple. Mom makes turkey. Uh, I make turkey sometimes. I don't love turkey, but I did do a video of me making a turkey on this channel, and it's pretty funny. If you want to laugh, go check that out. But my favorite things at the turkey table, the turkey round table, sometimes there's ham, honey baked ham. I do enjoy that. Uh, I also like, I'm kind of breaking up the, the swerve. Some of it's kind of chunky here. I also do love stuffing and then mashed potatoes. Oh, but hey, we're keto. We're doing keto here. So we can't, I don't think we can make a keto mashed potato. Although maybe we could. Maybe we could ask ChatGPT to come up with a keto mashed potato. Probably is possible. Obviously wouldn't have potatoes. We'd have something else, some sort of more keto friendly veggie. Is a potato a veggie or a fruit? All right, we now want half a cup of unsalted butter. It's a full stick of butter. If I melt it, I think I melt it. All right, I got my butter melted. I'm gonna put some of the vanilla right in there, I think. It's a half or full teaspoon of vanilla extract. There was one year where my brother and I kind of rebelled against the world and uh, made steak instead of turkey for Thanksgiving. No regrets there, that was delicious. All right, so one teaspoon of the vanilla goes in there and then add it into our dry stuffs. We wanna mix it around, it says, until it resembles wet sand, which it already is resembling wet sand. This is gonna be our crust mixture, our keto crust for our cottage cheese pumpkin pie delight. Say that 10 times fast. There's some big chunks of sugar I'm just taking out. I don't know. Maybe I should leave them in, but I think it's like, I don't know. Is it too late? Can I still save them? Now this is similar to the pie crust we made for our pumpkin stuffed cheesecake. That was delicious. And that's really the video where I decided I wanted to make a full on pumpkin pie because that came out so good. I was like, I need to make a pumpkin pie. And you should go watch that one if you haven't. Not that many people saw it. It's very good. Pumpkin stuffed cheesecake bars, keto deliciousness. All right, so you wanna get a pie pan uh, and put the almond flour crust into it like so. And then we're just gonna kind of push it down and up the sides a little because, you know, people like to have a little, a little crust on the back too when they're having their pumpkin pie, which makes me realize, don't ask me why it makes me realize, I have to go to the post office today, but somehow that's how my brain works. I can't even figure out the thread that attached the two. The minute I thought people like backs on their pumpkin pie, I thought, I need to go to the post office. It's a weird connection. Anyways, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. There you go, that looks like a nice crust though, I will say. We gotta make our filling next, obvi. That's what the kids say, they say obvi. I have three of them. Obvi, dad, obvi, they say. I don't even know what they were doing in here last night. I came down and there's like this huge mess of food coloring, like they were tie-dyeing or something while I was asleep. <sighs> Anyways, set that aside and we're gonna work on our crust. No, that is our crust, we're gonna work on our filling. I've got a messy workspace, it's in my nature. Do you remember that ad? Like six of you are gonna remember this ad. Uh, okay, what do I need? And I need some cottage cheese. Oh, very wet looking cottage cheese today. This is probably like only, you know, Connecticut natives that'll recognize this ad. When I was a kid, there was always this ad about Catskill Game Park, I think it was called. And it'd be like, it's in our nature at Catskill Game Park. Adventure is in our nature. Some, you remember that? You'll find adventure.
Was that a nationwide ad or is that just some random Connecticut Northeast memory? That's a lot of liquid, dang. All right, so we want a cup and a half of strained cottage cheese. Now what I've learned, you know, hold on, I don't blend it yet, I have to strain it first, I forgot. It's been a minute since I worked with uh, cottage cheese like this. So I need my cheesecloth and I need to strain it. And I need a cup and a half, is that right, cup and a half? Of cottage cheese after straining, which someone told me is the same as farmer's cheese, but I have not been able to find farmer's cheese, so. I need to research that a little more. I'm gonna need more than that for sure. I hope I have enough cottage cheese. Oh, I do, I have a whole nother thing of it. Okay, so we're gonna strain the cottage cheese in our cheesecloth, uh, like so. Never a clean job, but effective. All right, so I've got my cup and a half of strained cottage cheese. I'm gonna put in my little Ninja Chopper thingy. If you want one of these, they're really handy for doing this sort of thing. I'll put a link in the video somewhere. I might earn like 12 cents in affiliate money if you order one through my link. Okay, so I'm gonna blend this up. I did turn on channel memberships too, if you're looking for a way to support. Basically all that does is it supports me and the family with YouTube ad rates changing, different seasons, things like that. The ad revenue can go up and down. YouTube memberships just a way to support. So you don't have to do that, but I did turn it on because some people asked me to. All right, so that's pretty well blent up and smooth. I almost feel like it get a little more smooth. Yeah, we're gonna call that good enough. So a cup and a half of blent up grained cottage cheese. Try not to cut myself there. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna take our blended cottage cheese and put it into a bowl. Something you can mix in. If you got a KitchenAid, you could use that. You know, one of those stand mixers. I got in like the KitchenAid stand mixer phase for a long time. Thought they were the greatest thing. Now I'm like not so sold on them. Now I think they're just kind of annoying. I like how I've got like a grudge against the KitchenAid stand mixer. But I got this little KitchenAid, it's still a KitchenAid, so they can't get mad. Although they also don't sponsor me, but hey, KitchenAid, reach out if you want to. Uh, this little stand mixer, or this little handheld mixer is wireless, it charges. Just way more convenient than the big chunky, clunky thing. All right, now into that same bowl, we're gonna add a cup of pumpkin puree. I mean, we are making pumpkin pie after all, so it makes sense. So you'd use a cup of pumpkin puree. Add that in the bowl, flop, flop. Okay, so we added our pumpkin puree. My camera keeps overheating. Now we need to add another cup, full cup. Oh man, can I get a full cup out of this? Of the Swerve sweetener. Or you can use allulose, like I said, I already said that. I'm repeating myself. A cup and also a quarter. So a cup and a quarter, is that right? No, I don't know why I got the quarter. Put that back, Dave. That's because I had a quarter cup in the, in the crust, that's why. I forgot I was separating them. So a cup of Swerve or Allulose, whatever. The reason I tried the Swerve is because lately I've been using Allulose and it's not like as sweet as any of the other fake sweeteners. And I like sweet stuff. I'm a real sweet guy, you know? Okay, next we want to add three, yes, count them, three eggs. Uno, uh, come on Dave, dos. And I'm living life dangerously, just assuming I'm gonna get no shells in there, three. All right, then we want a half a cup of heavy whipping cream to be added. Sniff test, yeah, it's still good. <laughs> it says 12-17, so it should be fine. Half a cup of that in there, seems like a lot. Now I wanna add a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. There's one teaspoon and I'm just crazy like that, so half. Now we need the old pumpkin pie spice, a tablespoon and a half of that, so it's a lot. I'm surprised it goes in here and, well yeah, it makes sense because it's the filling, Dave. There's a tablespoon, super precise, you know? And then a half tablespoon, which I'm just gonna do this way because I can't find a half tablespoon, a little less. That, uh, that's close. <laughs> Baking's like the one thing you're supposed to be precise in, but here I am being imprecise. I feel like pie filling, it doesn't matter as much. It says you can add a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. I'm not gonna add that, that's weird. I mean, maybe I should, but it just seems weird. What do you guys think? Would you add it? Quarter teaspoon of salt goes in there. And then we mix, as Sam the cooking guy would say. So mix that all up into a delicious looking pumpkin pie filling. Okay, so it is like a liquidy consistency. I just asked ChatGPT, it says that's normal. So we should be good. We're now gonna dump it into the pumpkin pie, like on the, on the, in the pumpkin pie crust. I'm not a professional cook, guys. That's why I don't really know. I've never made a normal pumpkin pie, let alone a keto one. All right, we're now going to, it's very smooth, right? Yeah. So we're now gonna pour it into the crust like so. I just saw a rogue chihuahua enter the scene. We have little, little new puppies. I'm not gonna bring it up here because I'm cooking, but it's very cute. Okay, so here's our pumpkin pie, guys. Look at that, we gotta cook it into the oven. 
350 degrees for an hour until the center is set but slightly jiggly. Then we gotta cool it to room temperature for like a couple hours and then we will try it. And I'm really excited because it's gonna be delicious. We'll be back with the final reveal. Don't go anywhere. Cottage cheese, pumpkin pie. All right guys, I'm back. It is the next day. I don't even have my microphone on, sorry. The pumpkin pie is done, okay? So here's what happens with this pumpkin pie. Technically, I was supposed to wait four hours with it, like, not four hours, but until it completely cooled on the counter, which I did, and then put it in the fridge for four hours or overnight. I went overnight, and I'll take my phone out and I can film this and show you. It kind of cracked a little bit, you know. I guess that happens sometimes with pumpkin pie. Callie's here, hi. Yeah, you can see it cracked a little bit, but it still looks like a pumpkin pie. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna cut out a slice. We're gonna try it, and I'm gonna tell you if this is worth making. Okay, look, it extracted pretty well, guys. It extracted pretty well. And it looks, you know, like a pumpkin pie. And I wanna try it. I do like pumpkin pie, so there's a good chance I'll like this. Mmm. This tastes like pumpkin pie. I like how I got the extremely small fork. Callie wants to try it, but I don't know that you like pumpkin pie, do I you? I tried it. Mm, give it a shot. I'm down here because the camera's pointed a little around. What do you think? I can't imagine she would like pumpkin pie in any of its forms. It's a little bit moist. It's, it's moist. Kind of it is moist and mushy, but that's what pumpkin pie is. It's moist and I've mushy. I've never tried pumpkin. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to taste like. Here, I'll show you guys. All right, so here's what we got here. Pumpkin pie. To me, it tastes exactly like a pumpkin pie, except this one has no sugar, so it's much healthier. That's what. I recommend it. I think it's actually very, very good if you're on keto and you're looking to try pumpkin pie. And this is cottage cheese base. It's really a win-win for the holiday season, guys. Try it out. I'm gonna have some more of it. Yeah. All right, that's it, guys. We succeeded. We made pumpkin pie. Try it yourself. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.